Hey folks, I've been looking forward to do a comparison of the Thistler original Profi series versus the, uh, the Meta Atlantis. But what I needed was I needed two pens of the same diameter in order to do the comparison of the temperature distribution. So what I did was I bought this brand new 28cm Atlantis online privately. Um, it was brand new, sealed in the box for 150 euros just for the purpose of doing this video and after the video I will no longer need this so if you are interested then let me know um, and I'll be happy to sell it for, to you for the same price of 150 um, but having said that I've got one person who's already interested from my pre previous video so anyway um, I'll, I'll get in touch with that person uh, so the point of this video is not to compare this particular pen to this particular pen, okay? So the point of the video is to compare the original Profi series as a whole to the Atlantis from Demea uh, as a whole, okay? So, but just to show you what I've got here, this is a 28 centimeter Fistler Rondo, uh, approximately 4.7 liters. And this is a 28 centimeter uh, Demela Atlantis. So this is the largest size casserole or Dutch oven from their range. Okay. So firstly, we're going to look at the product range comparison, what's available in each of these series. Then we're going to have a quick look at the pricing. Uh, we're going to compare some basic specifications, the weight, the diameters, and we're going to have a look at the construction. After that, we'll do the test of the temperature distribution. I've just got a list here so I don't forget anything. Then we're going to look at some dislikes and disadvantages and we're going to finish with a summary of, uh, well, just my thoughts on uh, each of these product and what um, you should get given certain uh, circumstances. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, within the Atlantis, you've got three different form factors, okay? You have the saute pan that comes in two sizes. You have the saucepan, casserole, or Dutch oven, uh, or whatever name you want to call it, that comes in many different sizes, from very small, as small as 1 liter to 1.4 liters, up to the biggest model, which is a 28 centimeter, 8.4 liters, which is what I've got here. And finally, you've got the stock pot, the soup pot, uh, that comes in two sizes, a 5 liter and an 8 liter version, with uh, 20 centimeters to 24 centimeters in diameter. Uh, the Fissler uh, gives you more options. Okay, You've got the, what they call a roaster, which is really a saute pan slash rondeau. Uh, that comes in two sizes, and I've got that in the 28 centimeter 4.7 liter version. You have what they call the low casserole or Dutch oven, and this is, I guess, uh, the most directly comparable version to the Atlantis. Okay, so this comes in four sizes, um, but um, just one note, I think they might be discontinuing the 28 centimeters because that is getting harder and harder to find. Uh, a little while ago, I saw a deal on bol.com that had the 28 centimeter 7.2 liter version for 147 euros, uh, which is a crazy deal, which is a steal. Um, if I didn't have my Lecrosay Dutch oven, I would have bought that in an instant. Uh, but. Um, but now it's getting a bit hard to find that model. Okay, so just a note there. And you've got the stock, so, sorry, not stock pot, soup pot. So what they call a soup pot, the third one here, uh, that comes in four sizes up to a maximum of 28. And you've got what they call the large soup pot, which is a bit confusing, um, but anyway, uh, that also comes in four sizes. and. Um, and the biggest version has a quite a big volume, 14, 14 liters in capacity. Well, pricing. They are somewhat comparable. Um, I'm obviously not going to compare prices of each single model, and it's impossible to do so anyway because they don't come in the same volumes. But the Atlantis, uh, the pricing 
here at least in Europe is more consistent. So this is the kind of price you're looking at. But if you look hard enough, you will be able to buy this piece at the bottom end of that price range. Okay, and that's how I got my 24 centimeter 5.2 liter version. I got that for I think it was 195 euros if I remember that correctly. And the 28 centimeter version, you could pick that up for about 220 euros. Okay, so that's not a bad deal for what you get. It's pretty good value for money, I would say. Now the Fistler, it is uh, much more inconsistent in terms of its pricing, so which also makes it difficult for me to give you a very accurate guideline. Uh, if you look at the 24 centimeter to 28 centimeter model, you could pick them up for anywhere between 150 to 259 euros is the highest price I've seen in that whole wide range. Okay, so the four models, um, so all of these four models you can pick up in somewhere within that price range. But sometimes they do have very good deals on sale and you don't really see that with the Atlantis. Um, like I just said, once I saw a 7.2 liter Dutch oven for 147, and that was crazy. And um, and I've also seen, I think even now today, if you go online, you can pick up the original Profi 24 centimeter Dutch oven, uh, 4.6 liters in volume for 125, which um, which is a very good deal. Now in the U.S. Uh, in that part of the world. Demeda tends to be much more expensive and Fizzler tends to be more economically priced. So even though it's a European product, the prices tend to be actually significantly less. The price tend to be significantly cheaper in the US for some strange, strange reason. Now the comparison of the weight is not that representative here because uh, they obviously don't come in the exact same volumes. But let's just have a quick look given the same diameter. Uh, so this Vistler is 4 kgs, 4 kilograms in total, and 3 kilograms is on uh, the pen itself. This Demela is 3.8 in total and 3.2 kilograms is on the pan itself. So that extra 200 grams well, can obviously be attributed to the increased height. Um, so overall they weigh, you know, if you get two pans of roughly the same volume, they're going to weigh very, very similar. Okay. Now the bottom diameter is something that we should have a good look at. Here is the bottom of the Fizzler, here is the bottom of the Atlantis. I've got the Atlantis on a little paper pad just because I don't want to scratch the bottom, so when I sell it, it can still be in brand new condition, uh, by the way. So the bottom of the Fizzler is slightly smaller than the actual diameter, so this is 26 and a half. Um, in fact, I'll just get a ruler just so I remember it correctly. Yeah, that's correct. So 26 and a half. And for the Atlantis, it is the full 28. Okay, so this is the full diameter of uh, the pen. So here I just want to make a point, especially with the Atlantis, oh no, in fact, only with the Atlantis, is you got to decide, do you actually need a pen or a casserole this big? Uh, this is really a big pen. It's very wide. It's got 8.4 liters of volume and um, and the bottom is really really big okay so this is quite unforgiving uh, if you have a flat top and I would say that this is most likely too big for most flat tops whether it's electric ceramic halogen um, even with induction you've got to be a bit careful so if you're considering buying this pair just make sure that your hob is going to be able to accommodate the full 28 centimeters. Okay, I mean it's okay if you short by let's say two centimeters on each side because this pan just conducts heat so well. But if your hob is smaller than that, then I would seriously consider maybe getting a smaller size 
so you don't have um, a, well, a mismatch that's too big between the bottom of your pan and the size of your hob. So now we get onto the construction of the two pans, and they are both high-end disc bottomed pans. Okay, so the Fissler, it has a very thick aluminium encapsulated aluminium bottom. Okay, and this aluminium bottom is six or seven millimeters in thickness. Um, and I don't know the exact number, but that's roughly where it's at. Okay. Now with Fistler, they don't, I, mean, I have not been able to find um, the exact construction of the bottom, whether how many layers of, or, or what goes after, or what goes between what layers. That I have not been able to find, okay? But this is a very, very thick and solid bottom, um, if you listen to that sound, okay? The Atlantis, on the other hand, it has a thinner bottom, but it's a little bit smarter in the way that the bottom is constructed. Uh, so it still gives you that very good heat retention and extremely good heat conductivity. Okay, so on the bottom of the Atlantis, you've got a two millimeter thick layer of copper that goes all the way to the edge, sandwiched by uh, two very, very thin layers of silver. Okay, now personally, I think that silver is a bit of a marketing gimmick because it's so thin that um, whatever effect it has is probably going to be negligible. Um, I would rather have a bit more copper or even a couple layers of aluminium just to make the bottom cook a little bit slower. But anyway, so two millimeters of copper uh, within two very, very thin layers of um, silver. And on the bottom, you've got three layers of uh, stainless alloy, and on the other side, there's obviously another layer of stainless steel. Okay, so the total bottom of the thickness, or rather, the total thickness of the bottom of the Atlantis is uh, three point. It's either three point six or three point eight. Um, I've seen it sing both numbers, but let's say it's three point eight millimeter. The handles. Um, well, much simpler style handles on the Fizzler. Um, it's a, a tubular style handle, but it's quite comfortable and it's got a good, I mean, this is just a good utilitarian design. And on the Atlantis, a little bit more classy, I guess, um, but it depends on what you think is classy, but, um, but still very, very comfortable to hold. Um, and so yeah, no, no real complaints there. Yeah. So for the results of the temperature distribution test, uh, first I have to mention the Atlantis is a little bit disadvantaged because of the full 28 centimeter diameter on the bottom. Okay, the Fissler has a 26 and a half centimeter diameter, as I mentioned before, uh, and the hob I'm using is 21 and a half centimeters in diameter. Okay, so that means uh, on the Atlantis there is more area not covered by the hob than the Fissler. So taking that into consideration and looking at these results, uh, I'm going to call it a tie uh, to be a little bit fairer to the Atlantis. Uh, you could see the temperature differential between the center and the edge on the Fissler is slightly smaller by a few degrees than the Atlantis. But having said that, yeah, I also more or less expected the copper in the Atlantis to be more effective in this case, especially with an undersized hob. Okay, but yeah, here we're talking about talking about a six degree difference. Um, so on paper, the Fissler looks better. Uh, but in practice, I'm just going to call it a tie. Right? Now, with the speed of heating, or how fast or slow each of these pans cooked, it's pretty interesting. Okay, The Atlantis, it is already a slow cooking vessel. Um, the hold of that heat uh, by the combination of the copper, silver, and the stainless steel is already incredible. Okay, But the Fissler, because of that extremely thick aluminium bottom it's even more phenomenal at retaining that heat and you could see that here 
I pick two points at the middle of the experiment and towards the end, the fizzler cooks anywhere between two minutes to two and a half minutes slower than the Atlantis. Okay. And the Atlantis is already a slow cooking vessel. And the Atlantis already cooks slower than my 28 centimeter Le Creuset cast iron. And the fizzler, it goes two and a half minutes on top of that. So there is no winner. I can't pick a winner here because it's up to you if you want something that cooks a little bit, uh, well, not, not faster, but if you want something that cooks slow, and if you want something that cooks even slower than that. And I gotta say the Fistler is the slowest cooking pan I have in my kitchen I've ever tested. Uh, and it holds that heat better than anything else that I have and test tested. Um, right in, in my kitchen and this just goes to show you that kind of like what I did in the previous video comparing the stainless casserole and a cast iron casserole and why I prefer the stainless is that when you get a premium stainless pan it's going to perform at least as good or most likely better than a cast iron and that is specifically referring to the re retention and hold of that heat. Okay, so now let's move on to what I dislike about each of these pans. Okay, so what do I dislike about these pans? The Fistler Original Profi and the Demela Atlantis. And what are some of the disadvantages? Now, firstly, with the Fistler, uh, I I really tried to think of what do I not like about this series and um, yeah I cannot think of any um, it's just uh, I'm not saying it's better than the Atlantis okay it's just a overall um, great package and great value for your money uh, so in that sense, there's really nothing that I don't like about it. The only thing that you might find a little bit annoying is if you don't want a vessel that cooks that slow. Okay, so if you cannot be bothered to wait for several minutes for the pan to heat up, uh, but it's going to heat up on the faster on the gas stove. Okay, because I use my on the electric stove. Um, that's the only thing that you might not not like about it, in my opinion. Okay, so overall great package. Now, with the Atlantis, there are a few things, okay, and it's going to sound like I think it's a bad product, but I do not think it's a bad product, I think it's a great product. It's only that because this is the best cookware there is, uh, supposedly, and as a result, I have very high expectations from it. Um, and that's not only looking at the pens themselves in particular, that's also looking at the product range um, as a whole, okay, and what it offers for the customer. So I already said in the last video um, that I think the lid feels a little bit cheap for the price tag that it comes with. And I also think the sides feel a bit too thin, but these are really superficial nitpicky things and they don't affect um, its use in the practical world. Okay, um, but now having spent a little bit of time with this pen, uh, there are a few more things that I did not think about in the last video that I did, which was a comparison between uh, the Atlantis industry and the Apollo. Uh, so the first thing is that there is no 26 centimeter version of the Atlantis casserole. Okay. Um, and uh, because with this 28, like I said, it is really, really big, um, 8.4 liters in volume. The bottom diameter is really wide and it could be too wide for a lot of electric or any flat top um, stoves. So I think a 26 centimeter version with a volume, let's say about six and a half liters, might be the just the right sweet spot for a lot of people. In fact, I'm going to show you right now quickly. Um, this is the 
So this is the next size down. This is 5.2 liters um, and it's 24 centimeters, okay? So if there is a, quite a big size difference between the two and if they made a model in the middle, I think that would be, well, that would be a real winner um, because it just combines the two worlds, let's say, um, by meeting, meeting halfway, okay? So let's put that aside. And along with that, uh, I'm a little bit annoyed that the Atlantis, they don't come in a rondeau version like the Fizzler. So a rondeau is basically the same as a saute pan, but it's got two short handles like this instead of a short and a long handle. Um, and I think by not having that version, they are, they are well, they are limiting themselves to um, potential sales because uh, the the saute version with a long handle is going to be too big for a lot of ovens, okay? So, and that's why I don't have a pen like that. I can only have the short handle because, um, you know, this fits in my oven and the long handle does not fit in my oven. So it's a little bit annoying that they don't have a version, uh, the rondeau version in the 24 and the 28 centimeters. And the last thing about the Atlantis, which I also mentioned in the previous video, is that, um, it doesn't differentiate itself enough, I feel, from the Apollo, okay? The, the performance, uh, and I'm especially referring to the, the evenness of the heat distribution, the performance of the Apollo is so close to that of the Atlantis, uh, I'm struggling a little bit to find reasons why you would buy the Atlantis over the Apollo. Uh, so for me, I mean, just again, my personal opinion, uh, what I would personally like is that if they just made the bottom diameter of the bottom thickness or the bottom thickness of the Atlantis a little bit thicker, so it cooks a little bit slower, um, then what well, that achieves two things. One is that well, it differentiates itself a bit more from the Apollo. Uh, and the second thing is, especially for this 28 centimeter version, this bottom is so wide uh, that I feel that the 3.6 millimeter base is too thin for a bottom of this of this diameter, and it doesn't give enough time for the heat to spread evenly right to the edge, uh, it's, it, especially if you got somewhat of an undersized hob like I do. So if they made the bottom a little bit thicker, either by copper or if they don't want to spend the money. Uh, getting copper and use you know a couple layers of aluminium it just gives a bit, a bit gives it a bit more time um, for the heat to spread more evenly okay um, because the mailer has decided to use the same thickness bottom for all the sizes uh, but and I'm not sure if that's the, you know really the right approach so on to the final part of this video uh, which series should you consider buying the original Profi from Fistler or the Atlantis from Domena? Uh, and this is difficult. Um, I really cannot lean towards one or the other um, because it does depend on several things. And uh, it, it did sound like I'm critical of the Atlantis, but that's only because I'm expecting a lot from it being, well, the the, the, the Rolls Royce of um, stainless pans, and and let's break it uh, let's break it down like this because they are both fantastic vessels. Okay, so you should get the Atlantis or you should consider getting the Atlantis uh, if you live in Europe. Okay, so the price of both series in Europe are pretty comparable. The Atlantis is a little bit more expensive, but it's not significantly so. Uh, so if you live in Europe, you don't mind spending a little bit more money, or just a little bit more, and you want the most premium brand because the Atlantis is more recognizable than the Fizzler, not by a huge margin, just by a little bit. And you don't want a vessel that cooks as slow as the Fizzler. Okay, so that's why you should get the Atlantis. Now, you should consider the Fizzler uh, if you live in the US or maybe even the whole of North America, okay? In the US, the price of the Fizzler is lower than that of the Atlantis, which I found, I found strange because it is a European product. 
especially when they have a sale. I've seen sales on the Fistler US website where you can pick up this rondeau for as low as 129 USD, and that's very, very cheap, okay? Uh, so in the US, especially when Fistler has a sale, um, their pricing is very, very attractive. And second reason why you might consider the Fistler, um, if you have a slightly undersized uh, hole, Again, um, the bottom of this Atlantis being the 428 centimeters is not very forgiving. Okay, so that's one reason, another reason why you might lean towards the Fizzler. And lastly, if you want a vessel that cooks very slow, okay, so in that sense, the Fizzler is definitely the better choice. Um, but again, having said that, the Atlantis, like I said, already cooks slow, it's just that if you want a vessel, that cooks very, very, very slow, okay, then get the Fizzler. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Um, again, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it helpful. And I will see you in the next one.